Hi everyone, it's Chen Sol from Reality Art Pod here with my player rankings for week eight of Big Brother 26. Before I dive in, I put a link in the description to my playlist where you can catch up on my previous recaps and rankings. If you like the content, consider liking and subscribing. These are my rankings based on where things stand and how the players are doing in the game at the end of the Thursday night episode. So spoiler warning, I will be talking about the eighth evicted house guest, but let's dive into it. We have to say goodbye to Quinn here who last week I put in last place after a disastrous HOH where Leah used her veto and he nominated Joseph. He gets completely blindsided by Joseph's eviction, which really sends his game into more chaos than usual, with he and his only real ally Leah being really shaken up by this. After Chelsea wins HOH, he hopes for security because she was one of the people he was riding hard for after the Tucker vote, and he kept her safe last week. For the most part, he plays in the background for the first half of the week. He's really counting on Chelsea to return a favor, though on his HOH, he never really tried to name the alliance or make it real, which could have really helped. Angela and Kimo are nominated, great nominations for Quinn, but when Mackenzie wins the veto, Quinn becomes such an appealing target due to his competition ability, and he really just has no support left in the house, having burned bridges with everyone with influence, with the straw that breaks the camel's back being t who was protecting him until he came for her friends. So he goes on the block next to Kimo, a really tough spot to be in because Kimo has two locked in votes from t and Rubina, and it would be really hard to get Chelsea, Mackenzie, and Cam to change their stance after they definitively took action against him already. He tries to campaign, and it was honestly sad to watch. If I were in his shoes, I would want to try, but he has such bad credit in the house that nobody would give him a loan. It was kind of funny to see him roam around the house begging for votes like alms in a campy way. He made some decent points Wednesday night, arguing loyalty to Chelsea, but ultimately his fate was sealed the moment that the veto was used. In 8th, I'm putting Kimo, who last week was 8th. Kimo came into this week after barely eking by the last eviction. He almost went home, and his speech saved him as far as we know. Unlike when Rubina was saved by the vote, he stays a target still coming into this week. Chelsea, who voted to keep him, asks him to be a pawn, and he's just cool with it. Not like he had any real say in the matter anyway. And I think if the nomination stayed the same, he would have gone home on Thursday against Angela. The Quinn backdoor plan happens really with little involvement from Kimo, who greatly benefits from it, but it's telling that they saved Angela instead of Kimo, showing that they really don't trust his vote and are willing to risk his life in the game to control t and Rubina's votes. He got involved in some house happenings, doing a little talent show and singing a little ditty, but overall I feel like he's just there for summer camp and to hang out with his friends, and isn't really trying to win the game. If he has opportunities to win the game in the future, I still don't think he'll take the chance. In 7th, I'm putting Leah, who last week was 5th. Last week she won her first comp in the veto, resulting in her ally Joseph being evicted. Following the eviction, she was destroyed, and with Chelsea and HOH, Leah didn't really have room to do much of anything, and was pretty much at the mercy of the house. She got shut out of most of the strategy in the latter half of the week, both by isolating herself and by being not so on the same page with so many people. She and Angela voted against the house again. I don't think voting with the house would have helped her in any way. With there being these two trios in the house, I think there's a high likelihood that Leah and Angela lose this HOH and end up on the block together this week, and while her game is a mess right now, now, it would be really silly for any of these players to not want to chip away at either of those trios this week. In sixth, I'm putting Miss Angela, who last week was sixth. After being nominated and saved by Leah, she votes wrong in the eviction, opting to vote Kimo out, and being shut out of the plans last week, but mostly because she was getting information from Leah, who was being left out. She tries her regular tricks on Chelsea to not get nominated, only to get told pretty much to cut it out, and she folded and said, okay, whatever, put me up. She gets nominated and saved with the veto. I would say she didn't really have control this week, but just like with Tucker's eviction, while she plays messy, the idea is that she is suggesting are what's ending up happening. In the end, she has some argument to say that she got the ball in motion for some of these big moves. These kinds of things are things that keep me from putting Angela lower on the list or last. She is playing the game and often has some good reads. I think she'll continue to go on the block and fill a seat, but I'd be really surprised if she goes home this week. In fifth, I have Rubina, who last week was third. Coming into this week, she was pretty safe on all sides, and she really makes good use of her time during periods when she's safe, chatting with people and having life conversations that make them attached to her. It's hard to assess her game outside of that because she doesn't really actively play the game unless her back is against the wall, and for that reason, I struggled to see her really orchestrating plans moving forward, especially because she's very emotionally attached to everyone in the house. I feel like she'll just end up coming for Angela and Leah, which isn't really best for her game when there's a much stronger trio in the house than hers. In fourth, I'm putting Cam, who last week I had seventh. This week, I was worried for him being one of the last men standing, and he even more so is now. Him being left out of the vote last week could have been bad for him depending on the HOH result, but his close ally won HOH, making him safe for the week, and with his safety, he did a better job than usual, bonding with people and getting involved in the social game, doing multiple singing performances in the house. I would have never predicted that from week three Invisible Cam. He's teamed up with two of the strongest competitors in the house in Mackenzie and Chelsea, and through that has a strong chance of making it far in the game. I'm still not seeing a Cam win in the cards, as he pound for pound gets beaten by everyone in the game if the jury is choosing on gameplay alone, given that he's been left out of multiple votes and he's yet to really make a big move besides the Tucker vote. I heard rumblings that this HOH tonight would be physical, which makes me feel good about the result of that competition. Being someone 
someone who will help Cam to get into the top seven. In third, I'm putting Mackenzie, who was fourth last week, when she flipped to keep chemo, which made her look really good to a lot of people in the house. This week, Chelsea's HOH was good news for her, keeping her safe, and she won the OTEP comp in a way that gives her a historic stat and a win to help pad her resume. She got a lot of grief online for using the veto, but I feel like being the first person to not use the veto when you already don't have much of a resume is such a lame talking point, and by using it, she really fits herself more nicely into the overall vibe of the season. She showed some foresight by warning Quinn ahead of the veto meeting and saving Angela, which could garner some favor from Angela, who does seem to really like her. The positives are she comes into this week with allies in Cam, Chelsea, Leah, and Angela, making her most likely to be safe, though if T-Core, Rubina, or Kimo win, she's in potential deep doo-doo. In second, I have Chelsea, who last week was second. She came into this week having just allegedly switched her vote last minute to keep Kimo. I want to believe that's true, but I feel like T-Core really put in the work to flip Chelsea last week, and on reflection, I don't think she really kept Kimo out of charity. Through that vote, she left Cam feeling really pissed at her and vowing that he was going to be a new man, but she wins HOH, which eliminated the immediate potential blowback from that move. Similar to her last HOH, she remains committed to making safe nominations in Angela and Kimo, which are fine nominations, I guess, but any favor from saving Kimo goes out the window. She settles on evicting Quinn, who's a fine target for her since he's been the undoing of her allies. He's completely wrecked her game in the past, and he'll never turn on Leah. So while she likes Quinn, I think she made the right decision, especially for a player like herself who appreciates predictability and order. I have concerns about her focus, because she increasingly is distracted by her crush on Cam. It's also slightly concerning that the show is kind of painting her in a negative light by repeatedly showing her being jealous of Cam flirting with other girls. It's been T-Court and Chelsea riding at the top for so long, and I worry that the show is going to continue to start painting Chelsea negatively and T-Court as the savior figure as the season goes on. Which leads me to number one, the savior T-Court, who was also first last week and really cruised through this week with a short safety from Chelsea. Kimo went on the block, but T-Court was cool with it, feeling like they had the votes to keep Kimo, and they did. T Court is such a jury threat because she's well liked, plays a great game, and the other house guests see that she would actually use the money to grow her business and make a difference in her life. In my head, this season is a chessboard with Chelsea and T Court at either side, and T Court does a better job at managing her pieces and keeping her queen protected. So those are my rankings for week eight. I love to read your rankings in the comments. I always reply to join the conversation. If you like the video, consider liking and subscribing. You can also connect with me on social media on Twitter and Instagram, which I have linked in the description. I'll be back next week for more Big Brother. Until next time, have a nice weekend. Bye.